So I'm going to explain a, a method which allows, um, but it allows it to be possible to create multiple signatures into a single signature in signing a, a Bitcoin transaction. So, okay, so we'll look at this more uh, method and for this we'll look initially at uh, a basic Bitcoin transaction. So in this case what happens is that uh, Bob and Dallas have a private key and we generate the public key from that and then we create some sort of address which is based on the, the public key. Okay, So this is uh, described as elliptic curve uh, DSA or digital uh, signature that, that we get uh, for, from the, the private key and we use elliptic curve as our crypto method for generating the keys. Okay, so when Bob wants to pay Alice uh, 10 bitcoins, then he creates a transaction. What he does is he defines the amount of the transaction and then he'll take Alice's public address, which is related to our public uh, key, and then adds that to the transaction. He'll then take the complete transaction and then sign it with his private key. Okay, so Bob needs to make sure that he doesn't lose his private key. That's then added onto the blockchain, and within 10 minutes or so, it's hopefully approved by the, the miners, and now uh, Alice will have 10 more uh, bitcoins in our account, and Bob will have 10 less. Okay, so that's the way it works. Uh, the private key is the core uh, of it. So before we, we, we look at uh, the actual methods, let's look at how elliptic curve actually works because it's used in a lot of uh, applications now. And what we do is that we, we, we create a, a curve, an elliptic curve, and it's defined by a certain equation. And then what we do is we define a point G on that curve, and then we r create a random number N, and that gives us a point on the curve. Okay, so N is the gradient between P and uh, G. So then P is equal to N times G. Okay, the G is known, that's the generator, and the P becomes the public key. So the public key is this point here. And if N is large enough, it's actually extremely difficult to be able to take P and Q and find out what the value of N is. Okay, so N becomes our private key. And then P becomes our public key. Okay, so that's the way elliptic curve actually works. So the way Bitcoins are generated. Okay, so this is a random number here that we generate. So as I said, we have a point on the on the elliptic curve, in our G. We then produce our P value, and then that becomes N. So N is our is our private key in this case. We then convert that into what's called base sixty fifty eight. Base fifty eight uh, just converts it into a a form which is easy to to register. That becomes our private key. From here, we create our our public key uh, signature, and uh, that's that's larger than the the prime number. And then after that, we create a hash of the public key using these two methods here, and then eventually we we convert that into our public address. So this is the address that we would advertise, and this is the uh, key that we want to keep secret. And the, the problem comes in uh, within within Bitcoin and for the Bitcoin blockchain is that if several entities want to create a transaction, then the two ways they're going to be able to do it is is by uh, creating a new public key. So in that way, they would generate a new key pair, and then they would expose that public key. So be possible to find out that these entities had created possibly that public key. Also we can have a policy where we take the keys, each of the public keys together to form 
a single transaction. Okay, so though with this, it's then possible to see who was involved in the transaction, Bob, Alice and Trent. And then there's a processing overhead that when the transaction is actually processed, then the, the system must check each of the public keys uh, to make sure that they uh, uh, verified the transaction. We can go for a two from three if we wanted. We could do any two, but again, that has a processing overhead. So that's the basic policy of a transaction where multiple uh, multiple entities will approve a transaction. With the Schnorr's uh, method, what we have is that uh, we can take each of the, the, the public keys, define a two from three if required, and then we add the keys together to produce a new public key. And it's this one public key that can be then associated with the transaction. The good thing is that it's uh, it's not possible to uh, trace back the public keys which caused the transaction, so we keep a good degree of uh, privacy here. Okay, so there's that's what it looks like. Uh, there's the, the two parts of the signature uh, that we have, and we've just proved the signature here. Here are some of the parameters that we've got. There's the generator value. This is the the uh, elliptic curve that uh, uh, Bitcoin normally uses. Uh, there is then uh, the secret key, and there's the public key. So if we just try to run that, We should be able to get our signature that we can then use. So we can try a new signature, and then it's there. Okay, so there's the value of G, that's the X, Y point on the curve. And there's a certain order of the curve that we use. There is the shade key, and there is the public key. So the public key is generated from the multiplication of the secret key value, the gradient, uh, times the, the generator, G. Okay, so that, that gives you a, a brief overview of how the signature is created. Now, one of the problems in the past has been that it's possible for Eve to be able to create her own key using this method. So if we take Bob and Eve, if they're part of this, then Eve might be able to broadcast Bob's key and then her key minus Bob's key. So when the two keys are added together, it will give uh, Eve's key. So anything that's related to this transaction would be associated with Eve. Luckily now, a new method has been proposed that allows a hashing of the keys and for them to be checked when they're actually created. Okay, so that's provided uh, a, a, a brief overview of uh, multi-sig. Uh, the good thing is that uh, we won't require a hard fork, so we won't require to switch the Bitcoin network off and then move to an, another blockchain. This can be implemented with a soft fork. Okay, thank you.